Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I am great. I had a few requests actually to do some talking about the queen palms, specifically about growing queen palms as house plants, indoor plants. I haven't ever talked about this before because, well, I never really considered queen palms a house plant. I just kind of figured a lot of people weren't growing them inside, but it does make sense that I bet a lot more people are keeping them indoors now since with all the plant craze that's been going on, there's more of a variety coming into the nurseries since there's not such a high stock up of the majesty palms, which y'all know how I feel about majesty palms. But the thing with queen palms is that they're pretty simple to grow. Typically speaking, as long as you're moving them outside during the summer months, spring, summer, early fall, they're not so bad. It's if you're keeping them inside year round that maybe there might be some more to talk about. I figure instead of doing this like a traditional plant care video where I put the thing up on the screen and just talk about some of the great things about the queen palms, why I like them, why I think they're fun to grow, and then maybe finish off with the cons, with you know some of the things that aren't so great and just some things to look out for. And by doing so, I think that that will round out to <laughs> what I was saying before as to why it's never really thought many people were growing them as house plants once I get to the cons. And when I go through the pros of it too. So to start things off, queen palms, I'm just talking about the regular from Zafiana, just plain old queen palms, no hybrids, not like the silvers, nothing like that. I'm assuming most people, if they pick these up and need some info about them, it was probably just labeled queen palm. So what's so great about them? Why do I like queen palms? Well, for one, I just think they're pretty. They have a nice texture. They have these fun plumose type fronds on them. Lots of texture in there. At one point when I was younger, I thought they were kind of swampy, but something about them as I grew older, got into my 20s and early 30s, I was just like, hey, no, I really like them. With the fun frilliness of the fronds, they have the nice tomentum going on on the trunk with the various colors that white powder and then that fun husky texture that you get with a coconut palm. They tend to get more of an upright and then actual palm shape to them faster than you would get with something like a majesty palm, which kind of just looks like a giant fern for a very, very long time, particularly if you're growing them as a house plant. And they grow fast. They grow very, very, very quickly. You count that as a pro and a con of the plant really because of these will outgrow most homes fairly quickly. Always rewarding having a plant that shoots up new fronds left and right and gets pretty big without having to do too much for it. They're fairly low maintenance as a house plant and that's always been my experience. Of course that depends on how you're growing them. Sometimes things can be more complicated. And of course affordability. Queen palms are usually not too terribly expensive and they're readily available most of the time. Depends on where you live. Here in the U.S. They're not too hard to get a hold of. Where I live, I'm up in zone 6A, 6B, St. Louis. So you only get to see them for a brief period of the year at the nurseries when they come up with all the tropical plants. Occasionally you'll see them at the big box stores. That was more a thing of the past. You still just like pop into Walmart and grab a six foot tall queen pump for like 15 to 20 bucks. I don't really see that happen anymore, but it was fun when that was the case. Propagate very readily, very, very, very readily from seed. Drop them on top of some soil, have them just covered a smidge. They have multiple eyes on them, like I said, like with a coconut, and they take off fairly quickly. Very quickly, if you live down in Florida, and I believe that they're considered invasive, maybe a class two invasives. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that in a long time, but that doesn't matter. I'm talking about these as a house plant. Queen palms are really versatile too. You know, if you've watched many of my plant videos, if there's a plant I love, I usually talk about being versatile. Hey, you hear that? Cicadas. First cicadas I've heard this year. They're kind of late to the game. They didn't get the memo that it was summer yet. Anyways, they originate in an area in South America. I believe Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, kind of right where those areas intersect and they grow in various types of locations. Like when I talked about the coconut orchids, how you can find them up high, you can find them down low, various elevations, which means various temperature patterns. It's a sort of a similar situation going on here. Versatile plants, plants that come from various areas with various topography and various climates. Those are plants that are typically going to be easier to grow because they can, well, they have a wider range of tolerances and preferences. And another thing that's so great about that versatility the thing that makes me love queen palms the most, well, it's a whole, it's a kind of a combination of things. The main thing for me 
is their cold tolerance. I don't know if I would call them cold hardy, but for being a pinnate palm, meaning that they have feather type fronds on them, feathery foliage as opposed to something with a fan-shaped leaf, like this Bismarckia down here, these are pretty cold tolerant. Some places still have them labeled as being hardy zones 10 and up. That is being extremely conservative. Queen palms are generally good zone 9A and up, and plenty of people are growing them in zone A, usually in sheltered spots with some protection, but they can take a decent amount of cold, well into the 20s, sometimes even the upper teens. And after that cold we saw down in Texas this year, I can guarantee it, just give it a few years. There's gonna be small plants and seeds popping up all over the place. They'll have fun labels on them, like the queen palm, like Houston Hardy, <laughs> things like that there are a lot of queen palms that are popping back from some horrendous cold and ice that they had down there. Not just in Houston too, in different parts of Texas. I mean millions of palms were killed during those freezes but there are a shocking number of queen palms that are bouncing back. Those temperatures were in the teens and below for a, quite a while. Wouldn't expect them to survive that especially when they hadn't been hardened off to it but larger plants can really surprise you sometimes. The smaller the palm, chances are the more delicate it's going to be. For me, living in zone six, where we get, well, last year we got down to below zero for almost two weeks. We're between like negative five and 10 degrees Fahrenheit back and forth for two weeks while that freeze was going on. In February, I obviously that would have, they, I don't think they would have survived that. But in the fall time, these aren't palms I have to rush to get inside as soon as the forecast shows a little bit of frost. I usually leave these out into the upper 20s as long as it's not going to be prolonged for a terribly long time. They can stay out longer. Get a lot of longevity out of them. I can have them outside a lot longer than I can a lot of other palms like Edenidias. They don't like cold. Not one bit. They like things nice and warm and toasty. The queens, I can leave these outside until temperatures are starting to move more into the upper 20s. Sometimes I'll even let them go even more cool than that, but not for too terribly long, because they're in pots, so they're more exposed than they would be if they were in the ground. Palms like my Adenidia, the Eureka palms, coconuts, those are plants that I can only have outside from probably, I would say, May through late September into mid-October, whereas the queens, I can bring these outside usually in March, depending. Our weather here is very, very, very unpredictable, being smack dab in the middle of the country. You never know if we're gonna get fronts from the north or the south, but typically I would say I could have them outside March through, sometimes all the way up to Thanksgiving. That's a big chunk of the year, and I could never do that with an Edenidio palm. Never, ever would that work out well with one of those palms. They would just rot and die. And they have so much more of a tropical look to them than the windmill palms do. That's one of the reasons that I put up with them in the way that I do, I mean, just their growth <laughs> and the size. I think it's worth it because you just get so much out of them, but I'm also lucky enough and privileged enough to be able to use and utilize the service that can come and take them when they're too big and bring them back for me in the spring and have a garage that's big enough to lay them down on their side, at least for several years. All in all, there's just so many great things about these palms. They grow fast, they're usually affordable and readily available. They can take a good amount of cold. You don't have to freak out and rush them back into the house as soon as the forecast shows a light frost. Low maintenance as far as watering is concerned. I mean, I have mine on drip, so I don't really worry about watering them, period. But even when they're not on drip, they're fine. Pretty low fuss. And then the main issues people have with them can be corrected by making sure that they have enough light and warmth. You can find queen palms growing in the U.S. People grow them all along the southeast and then up into the southwest deserts and over onto the west coast as well. So they're drought tolerant once they're established. And if you live someplace like Florida where you do have a pretty wet season, they can take that too. They appreciate it actually so much so that like I mentioned before, they'll reseed themselves and in some areas maybe take over. As a potted plant, I prefer to keep them moist. I don't like to let them dry out for too terribly long because they're in a container. So their roots aren't able to spread out and get down to more cool and damp soil to get moisture. They can't do that when you have them in a pot. And you get a lot more growth out of them that way too. They don't require much maintenance. The, this one right here that I'm showing you could use a prune. I could come in and prune off several of these fronds. There's this brown one right here that could come off. And even this one right over here, I could probably take that one off too. If you look, you can almost see like a division with these lower two really the lower three and the upper one, two, three, four, about to be five up top, where that's basically last year's growth and this year's growth. There's a big gap in there. 
because when queen palms are smaller, you may not consider this small before a queen palm. This one's not that big. I don't know how big it is, I haven't measured it, but I would imagine if this were a nursery or a grower, it would probably be sold with the 12 to 16 foot ones. That would be my guess. It's in a pot, so it may appear a little bit larger than that. I got a wonky tripod. I need to replace, there's like a little ball socket in there. Things are flopping around, so I apologize about that. It's when they're smaller, like I said, quote unquote, smaller, that the spacing between the fronds as they're coming up out from the trunk there, usually those will be spaced further apart until they actually start to put on some clear trunk. And then that will come closer together and it'll have more of a tidy, compact appearance to the canopy of the plant. And there are factors that can go into that too. Sunlight exposure being the main one. Do you want more of a compact growth? More light. They like a lot of light. So the more sun you can give them, potentially the closer you can keep all of those fronds together. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a bit. Overall, I just find them to be really easy to grow during the winter time, but that's because of how I grow them during the winter time. So for me, what I do with my queen palms, well, a lot of them I just send off to storage now. In the past, I did bring a lot of my queens inside. I don't really do that as much now because there's a service where I live where they'll come and pick up your big plants and they store them in a greenhouse for you. They keep their greenhouse pretty cool around 55 degrees or 60 degrees, something like that. And then they bring them back in the springtime. So that's nifty when they get too big, which queen palms, they get too big very quickly. I do have one here that I overwintered last year. And you can see I had to do some pruning to make it fit because they get too big. And that's not something I really stress out about because they grow so fast. It's like, well, it's okay. Take it back outside within a month or two, it's gonna flush back out, won't even notice. Typically when I take these inside, I put them in my garage and what I will do with them is lay them on their side. So just down on the ground, then I'll drill some holes in the sides of their pots so I'm able to water them. And I maybe water them about once a month. My garage is cool. I have a warm area and a cool area and the cool area stays between 40 and 55 degrees, somewhere in there. And they just hang out, do totally fine. Never had any problems doing that. Been doing that for probably over a decade. Last year is the only year where I didn't bring all my queens inside. I said I just brought the one. Takes up a lot of space having a big palm tree laying across the ground and eventually even laying on their side. They get too big very, very quickly. I have taken my queen palms inside, like actually in the house and not just into my garage and grown them in the home before throughout the entire winter time. And they were still just as easy. I had to water them more frequently because the house is more around 70 degrees. So I've watered them probably, I would say every 10 days or so. I'd give them a good drink, just like you would any other house plant, and that was about it. So those are the good things. They're pretty, they grow fast, they're versatile, fairly low maintenance in regards to the things that I was talking about. If you have them in potting soil, then it is a good idea to keep them fertilized during their growing season. Using a pump fertilizer that has good levels of potassium and manganese, that is important. If we get more into that right now, let's talk about some of the difficulties. So I've kind of already started to transition into that while talking about the things that maybe aren't so great about the queen palms. I mentioned fast growth as being one of the things that I love about them because it's just fun having a plant that grows fast. It's much more rewarding. But as a house plant, these outgrow being in the home very, very quickly. If you get one that's just a few feet tall, you know, I'd say three to five feet tall, that's probably about when the nursery starts sending them out at their smallest. Any smaller than that, they just, they don't tend to send them out because they don't look particularly pretty. They just look like a little stump with some scrawny like grass-like blades coming out of them. So normally they'll, the growers will wait until they at least have some mature fronds on them, which generally, like I said, three to five feet tall. Anyways, if that's the size you get them at and you're growing them inside all year round, then chances are, I would say, they'll fit in a house with a 10-foot ceiling for, I don't know, maybe three to five years. And that's if they're being grown in the house all year round. Not going to grow as fast if they're indoors all year. They are much, much, much easier to grow if you're able to transition them outdoors for the warmer part of the year. And when you put them outside, you don't have to do much with them. I mean, water them like you would any other plant, but they just thrive being outside in the sun. And you move them back inside when things start to get cold. Oh, cold tolerance. That was gonna be on my pros part. Well, thank goodness for editing. Hopefully I put in a part about that. There's always variables with growth and how that's going to go. The different lighting conditions they get is going to greatly impact how they look. You see this one, see this scrawny one right here? Looks kind of raggedy and dumb. That's partially because a storm came through and did a number on the top, but it's just a big old bean pole. 
which isn't that unusual for queen palms, particularly at this size, right? I mean, you usually see them as just little scrawny things. So whoever had this one before I did, whoever was growing it, didn't have it in very much sun or just packed way too tightly in with the other palms, which is normally how they do things in the grower's field. That is one of the causes of those scrawny trunks. And sometimes it's just the genetics of the plant. Some queen palms are just scrawny. I mentioned them being low maintenance. They are fairly low maintenance. Like all palms, they don't need to be repotted very often. You get the most growth out of them though when they do have some fresh soil in their container. When they've been freshly potted, I don't worry about fertilizing them anywhere near as much. I make sure that there is a palm fertilizer in their mix. It's really the years following a repot that I focus more on the fertilizing because I use a soil blend that's rich in organics and within a year or two, a lot of that flushes out of the pots, the roots take over, and that's when it's really important to make sure that they get their fertilizer. I do it every other month. The package, I like Palm Gain. That's been a pretty good fertilizer. Package says to do it once a month during the growing season. I do it every other month because this stuff's kind of expensive and they have always been fine with that. That was just a care tip, not really a pro or a con. Just remember with your palm trees, if you have them in a pot for many, many, many years that you have to stay on top of the fertilizing, particularly with palms that are fast growers because the queen palms can be susceptible to potassium and manganese deficiencies. And indoors, they can be more prone to multiple forms of rot, crown rot, root rot, pink rot. These are all things to watch out for. So it's a good idea to make sure that their soil doesn't stay wet for too terribly long because that can absolutely cause a problem if things aren't warm enough for the plant to utilize all that water and it, you don't want it just sitting around those roots. Helps to have airflow in the room. That's just a general rule with a lot of house plants, but with the queen palms, if these get spider mites on them, it's not as easy to get rid of it because of all the texture and the fun, beautiful, fluffy fronds they have. It's nice to look at but the spider mite webbing gets into all of those little nooks and crannies and it is, it's not fun trying to eradicate that problem indoors. You can take them outside and spray them, it's a lot easier. Having some airflow and humidity to help just stop it from ever being a problem is a great idea. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily prone to spider mites. They, I mean, just to the same extent as most house plants would be, that airflow and humidity will help keep that away. It's gonna be the same thing with mealybugs and hard scale and soft scale. I've never dealt with white flyer aphids on any of mine before. I've actually never dealt with scale on mine before either. I've just had people tell me that it was a problem. So make sure you comment down below. Let everybody know what you've had to deal with if you're someone who has grown them inside all year round. For me, it's mostly just been mealybugs and spider mites. I would have to say the biggest con to having a queen palm as a house plant would just be the speed of growth. They grow so fast. It's not going to be as quickly if you have them indoors 12 months out of the year, but still, it's quite a lot. Their fronds are really big. They have really, really, really long fronds on them. So it doesn't take them too long to outgrow most homes. It doesn't take them too long at all. Because if you have a garage, you can toss them that stays frost free. They'll usually do okay in there. I wouldn't go more than like five months. But that's, that's probably about as long as I would go with that. But otherwise, they, they can be a lot in that regard. Just because I mean, that's quite large to have as a house plant. And they like a lot of light, which isn't always that easy to give a plant in the house. It's just gonna depend on your home. If you're able to give them a ton of light, then that may help keep them from getting as long and stretchy and gangly looking. The best way to avoid the gangly, stretched out, kind of bean pole looking plant is to get it outside during the warmer part of the year. Once it's, you don't have to worry about frost, take them outside and give them as much sun as possible. If they're getting sun from sunrise to sunset, all day long, then the canopy on the palms, the fronds will be closer together where each one comes out at the base. You'll potentially have more short and stout growth out of the palms, but they're still queen palms. They're gonna do what queen palms wanna do, which is be big. Queen palms like to be big, big palms. Yeah, that's it. Just a little chat about the queen palms, the good things and bad things, what I like about them and what I think might be problems for other people when they grow them. And just like with any plant chat, it's important. People comment down below so we can all learn together what are some of your experiences. Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. Impossible to remember everything in one video. And but I don't know, what would you suggest to people who maybe bought a little queen palm and now they're trying to grow it inside? They shouldn't be difficult to grow inside. I would say they're still gonna be easier than a majesty palm, but it's just, I, don't, I don't know how long you'll be able to keep it is the thing. Cause you know, cause they get huge very quickly. I was going to give an estimate on like how much growth to expect per year, but there's so many variables on that one. It's gonna depend on how many months out of the year you can have them outside, what kind of light they're getting in your home, how warm your home is. Uh, mine easily put on at least 
two feet of trunk per year, if not more, probably more. But they're outside for a big part of the year, so that can greatly influence how fast they're growing too. Hey, Toby. Hey, Tobes. You said you're a good boy, Toby. All right, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.